Let's turn our attention now to a bay window and how to properly veneer a home around a bay. It really is a problem a lot, as you know, as a contractor. In fact, I've talked to some contractors who've, who've decided just to eliminate bays totally because they always leak. What a shame, because it's such a beautiful feature on a home. One other thing I would like to say before we start into this demonstration as well, um, one track builder that I've worked with through the years had a beautiful subdivision that they were working on, and in that subdivision, they had eight different bay windows that were leaking at one time. It wasn't that they were trying to run and hide from their customers because they had endeavored to make a repair on each one several times and they still leaked. The problem was, and you as a builder, contractor can appreciate this, they found out about each other and formed a little coalition and all eight of them were about to sue the builder. This demonstration that you'll see was demonstrated for them at one of the sites. They instituted this process and the problem went away. Hopefully that'll be the case for you. I would like to say that there's more than one way to do anything. This is the way I like to flash around a bay window. Uh, perhaps you know another way. Let me say this. At the point that you see this mock-up, imagine, if you will, that the brick have already been laid up to this point around the bay, and we have support here on each side of this lintel or angle iron with brick. So now we're ready to go on up with the brickwork. Once the brickwork above the window has been completed, the entire house is finished, many times then whoever it is that's responsible for placing the roof on the bay comes back. This is done many times after the process so that during construction it doesn't get uh, dented up and uh, uh, damaged in some way. So that being the case, let's say the man comes back and puts this top on. Now it could be that this is plywood and shingles on some homes, but on nicer homes many times it's a copper roof on a bay. So we'll, we'll say that this is a copper roof on a nice home. The problem with this application is this. We talked earlier about the one inch airspace behind the brick veneer being the weeping device, if you will, allowing the water to come down, hit the flashing, and exit a brick veneer. Some water will get through this brick veneer above this window. The way it's installed, there's nowhere for it to get out. What I have seen some contractors do is take a piece of flashing at this point, right above the bay, at the first level course of brick, and put a piece of through wall flashing there. That works somewhat, but the problem is, what about this area here? What about if some water gets through below the piece of flashing and into the side of the window on both sides? So that's not really the best application. And also, let's remove this top for just a moment. This is what I see happen at some locations. The mason comes and lays the brick, and not knowing where this window is going to be roofed at exactly, where it will terminate, they might even put the weep holes here right on top of the angle iron. A piece of flashing and weep holes here now allows the water to be dumped right inside the bay. So that application certainly doesn't work at all. I'd like you to consider doing it this way. You notice uh, just a bit of, of change since we were speaking a, a moment ago, but what we've done now is to begin what's called a curb. The vertical framing behind this bay window will be carrying the weight of the masonry on the rest of the home above the bay. Keep in mind, contractors, that each square foot of brickwork weighs 40 pounds. So it doesn't take long until we're talking about tons above an opening. It has to be properly supported, and the code says you can do that in two ways. This is one. What it calls for is three rafters, if you will, and the minimum size two by you can use is a two by six. You'll notice this is a bit oversized just for this presentation. But three two by sixes will satisfy the code. One stipulation is the first one must be lagged to the vertical framing that's on 16 inch centers behind the bay with a lag bolt that's five eighths by five inches long. So we've gone ahead and done that just to speed up this presentation. And what we'll do now is just add the final two pieces of the curb. Code mentions that it can be nailed on with 16 penny nails. The 
two pieces of framing closest to the front. Okay, the reason I used a little bit oversized material is because you never know exactly where this bay window roof will come in contact with the house. But this is what, uh, in this simulation, you'll see done. We'll go ahead and set up uh, the window itself. What we're doing now is surmising that, the, again, the brickwork is laid up to this point all the way around, and we're setting the window roof in place. But this could be done after this is in place, so just keep that in mind. The material that we're using uh, as flashing is just an 18 gauge galvanized steel, a very inexpensive product that could be later painted to match this copper tone on the roof. If you wanted to buy copper or something like that, uh, that would certainly look very beautiful on the front of your home. But uh, what it is is just a 12 inch roll that's bent four inches, four and a half, and three and a half, and it works very well as a counter flashing as you'll see. We're gonna tuck it behind the paper so that we have our shingling effect. Once both sides are in place, the top piece goes on, which again, gives us that shingling effect even with the flashing material itself. What we've done now effectively is any water that gets through in the masonry above this window and runs down the face of the house will hit this flashing and come out at weep holes that can be placed on all three sides of the window it can't leak. It's almost impossible for this application to leak. Now there is another way perhaps that you could do it with a series of pans. Um, the reason I say you could do it that way is because it adds so many more steps and so many more pieces to the application. And in my thinking, each time you add that many more steps, then there's room for failure. But many times what you'll see is a piece of flashing that comes out, uh, a three-sided piece, and it's a series of pans. Whatever water this one catches runs off into the next pan and so forth down the entire side of the window on both sides. So it's really a much harder application. With just three pieces of flashing, it's almost foolproof. One other thing you do have to have in place before you lay the brick is something to distribute the load. The code calls for a loose lying angle to be placed before the brick are laid. This does not have to be lagged to the framing because the wood is already carrying the load. What it does do for you though, once you get it in place, is it distributes the weight of the brick over several pieces of framing that the wood is lagged to rather than just sitting in one spot. Anytime a bay window has a roof pitch above a 7 and 12, then there's a need, according to the code, to come in here and weld on a stop every two feet on your angle iron so that gravity doesn't take over and just pull the brick right off the house. So again, keep that in mind. Above a 7 and 12, you must have stops every two feet on the angle iron. All that's left to do now is to lay the brick above the window. Once the brick is laid, a little caulking is done, there's really no way for this application to leak. Uh, very simple, very inexpensive. For you track builders, it would be something you could cut and use over and over and over from house to house. So I would strongly suggest that you consider this application or something very close to it. Remember, you must have through wall flashing above a bay window.